Hey, Dr. Bernard here. Don't do what this person did. The chemical he took, at least in the bodybuilding and powerlifting circles I knew in Illinois about 15 years ago, they generally avoided it. So medically and personally, I'm telling you, don't do it. This person's also a YouTuber and he talks about his whole case there too. Check him out, link in the description below. A man had a life-threatening accident with a fat-burning chemical. This is what happened to his organs. C.E. is a 22-year-old man presenting to the emergency room unconscious. His brother-in-law tells the admitting nurse that he found C.E. naked in the shower on the floor while cold water was running all over him. When paramedics arrived, C.E. demanded they go away, refusing to get into the ambulance. And when he arrived to the emergency room, flowing in and out of consciousness, he refused to tell doctors what exactly had happened. C.E. was a college student who enjoyed fitness. When he was in elementary school in the early 2000s, he got bullied. Most of middle school, I, I was pretty much bullied relentlessly. I, I was kind of on the shorter side. I was overweight, very nerdy, didn't have a lot of friends. When he got to high school, he started lifting weights for football. He gained muscle. No one was gonna bully him anymore. I came into ninth grade and no one recognized me. Uh, I looked radically different and I was starting to really grow into my body through weightlifting. And for me, uh, weightlifting saved me from bullying. It saved me from being an outcast. One day when CE was 17, his dad suddenly passed away. It was completely unexpected. You know, one morning he's fine. I go to school and the next thing I know I'm getting pulled out of school and my father's gone. Uh, I really blamed myself for the death of my father. His sudden passing threw me and to this pain and loss. And the second that happened, everything else didn't really matter to me anymore. The next thing that happened is I started binge eating to try to fill that void. Eventually, CE's physical body responded to all of this. He saw it as a direct response to coping with everything. He justified to himself that if he were to lose all of the weight, that it would be like redeeming himself. He started by heavily restricting his food. He would go on hours long bike rides. He would skip class to be at the gym for hours every day. And he did get results no matter how tough it was on his body. Eventually CE plateaued and his body adapted to the conditions. Looking for ways to keep going, he found a next step. He was going to have chemical assistance. It was never a gradual thing. It was an immediate jump into that. And that's when I started kind of looking for ways to supplement that weight loss through supplements. On a bodybuilding forum, CE read about stimulants and thyroid hormone as a way of increasing the body's metabolism. That'll burn fat, they said. He was able to buy them online and use them in combination together. He got some results from them for a while, but it wasn't enough. Back online, CE found out about a chemical named 2,4-dinitrophenol. DNP. So once again, I turn back to these bodybuilding forums, and at that point I had heard of DMP, but it wasn't really talked about. But someone had mentioned it, and I started looking up DMP. You know, the stories you hear immediately are both extremes. You hear about people dying, but you hear about people losing 10-15 pounds in the course of like a week or two. Looking at everything in that place of desperation, seeing three or four different YouTubers at the time, all these forum posts of people being like, yeah, you know, DMP is tough to be on, but like, I did it, it's fine, you'll be fine, sort of thing. I decided to make the commitment and uh, find a source for it. To someone doing their own research online, this was the perfect compound to get the job done, and CE started taking DNP. Immediately after taking a dose of his new weight loss chemical, CE felt hot. He wouldn't stop sweating. It got to the point where it became socially unacceptable because he would just sweat everywhere in class and in front of his friends. He would blast the air conditioning fans blowing all on him, but his body temperature only stayed high. Every time he took it, it put him in a world of pain. The internet forums told CE to be careful of the dose of DMP he was taking, but they always came back and said, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. But one day, eight months later, CE wasn't fine. In the morning, he took his dose, which should have been it for the day, but then he took a nap and woke up confused and took a second dose, thinking it was his first again. And that was the last thing that he'd remember for the next several days. In the afternoon, CE's brother walked into the house. He heard that the shower was on, bathroom door was open. 
he found C.E. on the floor, naked and groaning as cold water was running all over him. My brother-in-law walks by and immediately knows something is wrong. And all I would get out is, get me Coca-Cola and a milkshake from Steak and Shake. Um, because at this point, my body is ravaging every store of energy I have. And he went out and, and got it. By the time he came back, I had, I had lost responsiveness. And so he calls the paramedics. I was under the assumption that ownership of DMP is illegal. Was also very stubborn, so to admit that I was in any, any kind of danger was difficult. And also, I didn't really want to in, like, incur that financial cost of an ambulance ride. And so I sent them away. But once again, I lost consciousness. And once again, my brother-in-law finds me and he calls the paramedics a second time. The brother-in-law asks what was wrong, but he couldn't get a coherent response as he calls for 911 and CE is brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, CE is sweaty, confused, and trembling. He's in respiratory failure, but his measured body temperature is normal, and a blood test finds that his kidneys and his liver are shutting down. CE drifts in and out of consciousness. He has periods where he can be responsive, but he won't tell doctors exactly what he had taken because he was scared that he would get in trouble. CE thought it was illegal to take DNP, but in the United States, it's unlawful to manufacture, market, and sell for human consumption. So he probably wouldn't have gotten in trouble, but the people who sold it to him could. Usually, in a previously healthy 22-year-old man with no past medical history who's sweaty in respiratory failure with a fast heartbeat, the first thing doctors think of is stimulant use. Being the end of summer, this is especially dangerous because stimulant substance deaths have a higher incidence on days when it's hot outside because that increased ambient temperature makes it harder for one to dissipate heat caused by the intake of a stimulant, but CE's urine screen returned nothing. As the hours pass, CE's body temperature starts to rise. He's transferred into the intensive care unit because his organ shutdown was getting worse. All of this happening while he was intermittently combative with medical staff. They sedate him and stick a tube down his throat so that a machine could breathe for him. This medically induced coma could help the medical team somewhat, but with his body temperature quickly rising, his proteins start to deform. Basic bodily functions no longer happen. It's like his body is cooking itself alive, and this is life-threatening if nothing is done about it immediately. Doctors still have no idea what CE had taken. His brother-in-law had no idea either. Problems like his kidneys and liver shutting down and high body temperature usually correct when the underlying problem is fixed. But without knowing what CE had taken, there's no way for doctors to fix that underlying problem. If they knew, they could give an antidote or they could give something that could reverse and counteract everything that is happening, but they didn't know. In the intensive care unit, doctors place cooling pads on CE to try to lower his body temperature. They hydrate him with chilled IV fluids to push water into his kidneys. Both of these help his fever and his kidney failure directly, but they don't fix the underlying problem. And finally, CE's brother breaks the silence and tells doctors about the DNP that CE had been taking for weight loss for at least the last eight months. This was in addition to other fat loss substances, including thyroid hormone ephedrine, and clenbuterol. And this explains to doctors exactly what is happening. DNP is 2,4-dinitrophenol. People know the word nitro and associate it with explosives, like nitroglycerin, the thing that goes boom in dynamite, or a nitro engine in a car. Dinitrophenol can also be explosive, and if nitroglycerin is used today to treat chest pain and heart problems, then dinitrophenol could have biological activity too right? Explosions are a quick release of heat, and CE's body is hot and doctors can't cool him down fast enough. DNP isn't exploding in his body, but it's doing something. The mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, produces energy for the body. To produce energy means creation of heat. But how exactly is that energy made? This brings us to a concept called a gradient. Protons, also known as hydrogens or acid, get pumped out from the mitochondrial matrix. This is a place where important chemical reactions happen. When protons get pumped out of the matrix, they accumulate in this intermembrane space. This creates tension. Nature prefers a relaxed state. To be relaxed means to be perfectly balanced, as all things should be. But if more protons are sitting on one side, then that means that a gradient exists. Those protons will want to spread out and be less crowded, so they'll want to move back into the matrix, back to the side with less protons. But something's wrong. 
In living systems, most chemicals that have a charge, positive or negative, can't just cross through a membrane on their own. Cells don't let charged chemicals in. Protons have a positive charge, so they can't just cross back into the matrix. And the mitochondria is smart. It allows those proteins back into the matrix, but only if they go through a specific pore. And in going through this pore, those protons are exploited and used to create adenosine triphosphate ATP, which is the energy created by the powerhouse of the cell. But what happens if a chemical like DNP isn't charged at first, so it can cross freely through the cells to bring protons into the matrix? And then it leaves somehow, but then it comes back with more protons. And it keeps doing this until there's no more gradient. Then protons don't want to move because things are already balanced and relaxed. Then the mitochondria can't exploit them anymore to create energy. This could be what happens, I explain more on my second channel, Heme Review, why I have some questions about this idea. Add it to your watch next queue if it's in your recommended, or check the link in the description below. If mitochondria is short-circuited by DMP and it can't exploit protons to make ATP, then it needs to do other things to compensate for this loss in energy production. Sugars are a good source of energy, so break them down faster to keep up. One reason why we have fat tissue in our body is to have stored energy. And if the mitochondria is desperate to keep up energy production, then it needs to start burning those stores because cells start to panic. Dinitrophenol has stopped the normal process. All of this creating heat. And because CE took multiple doses accidentally, this process is amplified, creating even more heat as his body starts cooking itself alive. The internet forum was right, DNP burns fat, it burns sugar in the muscles, it blows up the process to make energy. The energy expenditure dissipates as heat. At some doses, it's uncomfortable, socially unacceptable sweating. At high doses, it's hyperthermia. Hyper meaning high, and thermia referring to heat or temperature of the body. High body temperature to the point of denaturing enzymes and proteins and shutting down the organs but this isn't the only thing raising CE's body temperature. His brother told doctors that CE had also been taking thyroid hormone. This increases the body's metabolism, gets used in some circles to help boost weight loss. Ephedrine also raises body temperature and clenbuterol is a chemical used that moves the body towards fight or flight mode, which would cause it to be more active to burn more energy and thus result in higher body temperature. So you can see a common theme here. The idea of using a chemical to boost metabolism to help lose weight isn't new. The simplified version is if you can expend more energy per day than you put into your body, then over time, you will start to dig into the energy stores of your body, the fat tissue, and then start to lose weight. It's more complicated than that, but let's keep it there for now for simplicity's sake. You can put in less energy to your body daily. We call that dieting. You can expend more energy, we call that exercising and being more active. The problem is that people often jump, jump right into it. it and suddenly drop their calories from whatever thousands per day to let's say 400 calories a day. They go super hard on the exercising on day one. They don't even ease themselves into it and they'll get good results for a couple of weeks, but then they plateau and then they stop making progress. There's no more room to make changes and even if they try to exercise harder, they could get physically sick. At this point, just after a few weeks, the worst part is they may not have even actually burned off fat tissue, just the sugar stored in the liver and in the muscle. That's tied to water, so if one checks the scale every day, and I would suggest checking less frequently, that's where they're going to see their progress, in the numbers alone. And being burned out means that they'll start relaxing, or they might quit altogether and then rebound, and then they'll say that it never worked. When you diet, start easy. Give yourself many options to change, and then tighten as time goes on. It can be as simple as removing a sauce that you normally eat at lunchtime, or removing a quarter of your dinner, running that change for a week, and then reassessing afterwards. It's at the plateau point that some people will seek outside help if they don't quit. They go to online forums or they ask people at their gym. Some will get supplements that you can buy at the store, which I would be careful with, and some others get into the hardcore stuff, bringing us back to CE. In the intensive care unit, doctors have no antidote for DMP. There's no way to suck it out of his mitochondria. Whatever he took, his body will need to pass it on his own. And while that's happening, doctors can treat the symptoms, but there isn't much else that they can do. Except, maybe there is one thing. 
doctors use a medicine called dantrolene, which can be used in the setting of hyperthermia. This medicine supposedly prevents calcium from getting released into the muscle cells. Calcium causes the muscle to commit to a contraction, which by itself would create heat. Calcium also sends inside signals to cells, which in this case could help lower heat production there. Every little bit can help. It doesn't always help, but maybe it's in the cards for CE. Five hours after the first dose of dantrolene, CE's hyperthermia resolved, and it never came back. Over the next 36 hours, four more doses were given. On the fourth day, after presenting to the emergency room, the tube that was down his throat was pulled out by him as he regained consciousness. The thing about admission into the intensive care unit is that for several days, you're not really moving. You're sedated and a machine is breathing for you. You're fed nutrients intravenously and it's the bare minimum to keep you alive. As a result, even though CE is muscular and was fit, he is going to need physical therapy for at least the next several months because of muscle breakdown that happened in his body, not because of the DMP alone, but because of how tough it was to keep him alive in the ICU. I don't recommend anyone take this stuff from a medical standpoint that I've seen and from a personal standpoint having been in this world earlier in my life. And I know someone's gonna say that this is no more dangerous than taking aspirin. They could be right, except the incentive for taking aspirin is to relieve pain. Once the pain is gone, you don't wanna take more. But the incentive for DNP is that you take it to lose weight. There's no telling where the bottom is. So even if the weight is gone, one could just keep taking and taking because the fundamental reason is different than aspirin. Someone making that argument might not agree, but I know someone who can speak from their own experience. I just want to really highlight how I shouldn't be alive today. Had I lived alone, I would have been dead. Had my brother-in-law just left me alone in the shower, I would have been dead. Had I just gone up to my room instead of going into the shower, I wouldn't be here. You know, so many people die from this drug and don't have the opportunity to tell this story. I'm sure there's a lot of people that take it, you know, safely and have good experiences with it, but it's, it's such a gamble and it's such a risk. The second you take DMP, you're strapping yourself into experience that has to run its course. When you go into the ER with a, a knife wound, a gunshot wound, all those medical professionals know what they're dealing with. They know how to save your life. You go in and you won't tell the doctors you're on DMP. They've never even heard of DMP before. You're putting yourself at a significant disadvantage to getting medical care. Yes, DMP is this super, you know, kind of tempting idea of radical weight loss. But it's interesting because if you are the kind of person that like struggles to lose weight in other ways, like there's the extreme hunger that you'll experience with DMP. There's the misery that you'll experience with DMP. So it's not nearly the promised miracle chemical that you, you're believing in. I, I strongly advocate to create healthier relationships with your body, create healthier relationships with your mind, explore weight loss in terms of changing things for the better. And that's what will lead to sustainable and healthy you know, kind of change in your body. After an ICU admission, a lesson learned about messing with fat loss chemicals and a continuing journey of self-improvement, CE made a full recovery and you can see him on his YouTube channel, link in the description below. The full interview with CE is on my Heme Review channel here. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.